today is the inauguration of Mele Kiari as the new group managing director of the NNPC. Of course, as soon as he gets in, those new seven chief operating officers are also coming into office today. This is a first transition, what we call a smooth transition of leadership at the NNPC. So let's talk to one of the industry professionals who is here with us live in the studio. We have Mr. Shomumi Olabode, who is a CEO at uh, Crabtree Limited and a consultant on oil and gas at the national, for the National Assembly. It's good to have you, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you we appreciate me. your time. It's a busy day for everyone. So the Monday, uh, is, even though this is a political capital, or well, you folks still do your business. Very much so. One of the biggest business in Nigeria is everyone has its eyes on NNPC, which is the state oil corporation. This is where our crude oil comes from. These are the guys in charge of the petrol, the diesel, the kerosene, whether we're doing them locally or refining. They are in charge of the joint venture. So when it's a change of leadership, everyone is interested. You are interested, don't you? I am. And everybody should be interested. I mean, primarily from the point of view that <clears throat> the oil and gas sector, the petroleum sector as we know it, um, metamorphosizes in some total to 70% of the economy. So even if you're in agriculture, if you're in telecoms, whatever, it should be of a passing interest. But having said that, it is also of a more strategic interest to us because of some of the expectations from the industry, in which case in, we are talking about the underdevelopment of the industry and the capacity of the industry not to live into expectations of what it should be. We'll, we'll talk so, about that in about a minute or two, but let's talk about this change of leadership. Okay. Uh, in, in years and decades ago, you want to know about how the NPC top leadership change. Sometimes it's on, it's on news when you hear it or mm -hmm. you just I wake up overnight and find out there's a new one. But this looks like a smooth transition from one leadership to the next, which Mr. President announced the nomination. They had about at least a few weeks ahead of time for McCanty Baru to hand over, who retired sure. due to age limit, uh, and now has reached the, the civil service age limit. So voluntary retirement because of age, passing leadership. And so the new gentleman, of course, who is not an outsider, <laughs> Kerry, uh, is also... Uh, a man on the inside must have taken a few days a week of, of, of tutelage, if you want to say, from, from uh, Baru, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, definitely one of the things that um, we need to ingrain into our culture of service is that government is a continuum, or should I say office service is a continuum. The leadership. We, yes. Typically, you find up more often than not that when new people come to government, in the name of wanting to do their own thing, they abandon what has been happening in the past. And one, that is at the bane of some of our underdevelopment issues. Now we are seeing a situation which is starting with NMPC, where people are ingraining a culture of understanding that driving leadership in any organism is a continuum. So what is basically going to happen is that it's going to pass in basically the ethos of what he has been doing to Baru. Now, it is now left for... Um, to, to, to carry. To carry, sorry. <laughs> it's now left for him to now pick up the good parts. I mean, definitely as a man of his own, he's going to bring in new ideas. It is expected that those new ideas will be a positive addition to what is happening there. So we expected to, <clears throat> we're expecting to see a situation where some of the things that are excellent that are being done will be carried on and some additional initiatives will be added all to the betterment of the industry. Well, one of the things that was perhaps a little bit surprising was that Mr. President not only chose a new group managing director for the NNPC, but also new seven, seven new chief operating officers, which means that Mr. President wants to see something holistic done about the, the state oil corporation and what goes on in the industry. That's my reading. Yeah, but, but, but typically, I mean, the CEOs typically... They are like the anchor points, more like you have the minister, I mean, the president and the minister. If, so, uh, so, these are carriers, ministers. Mean, yes, so if we're going to uh, put an analogy to it, typically we're expecting certain goals and objectives to be done. We are also expecting certain initiatives for the betterment of those who are insiders. You know, it's, yes, it is good to have new people. It is also good to have old people. It's the combination of the new and the old that gives the desired change. Because once things are totally new, it goes against the culture of an organization, and you can sometimes find resistance. Yes, well, that, what we're looking at right now is uh, uh, live pictures uh, as the inauguration of uh, Mele Kiari as the new group managing director at the NNPC headquarters towers in Abuja. will be taking place within uh, the hour. We expect that to happen. We have this live coverage for you, and you can see... Uh, some of uh, the 
uh, guests, of course, and top officials and staffs of uh, the NNPC, of course, is a very big conglomerate, as it were, many subsidiaries. So this is uh, the amphitheater at uh, the NNPC headquarters uh, where uh, Mekantu Baru will be inaugurated or formally uh, sworn into office. Then we expect him to give uh, a, a speech or a presentation about this vision and outlook for the NNPC and for the Ni entire Nigeria's oil industry. Uh, I guess some of the officials there, including himself, must be swamped by the cameras, <laughs> for the, by the photojournalists uh, who are there. So this is a big story. Uh, we're coming through with you here uh, today, the change of leadership, a smooth transition at the NNPC. Show me all about the uh, guests here in the studio. Yes, um, let's talk a little bit about Bakari. He's, he's an inside man who's head one of the strategic units of the NNPC. So this man who understands how the NNPC works from the inside. Yeah, you could say so. You could also say that he's also a product of the NNPC. In other words, he started his career there. He grew there. So he, through the rank and file? Through the rank and file. So that makes you, by and large, if there was ever a product of NNPC, he probably would be one. So not only is he going there to show some of the ethos of what NNPC stands for, is also going to be there as a poster boy that NMPC can actually produce something good. And this leads to the fact that, I mean, some of the um, whispering campaigns that you hear around the corridors that um, NMPC as an organization may not be perfect and all that, but we expect that some of that will be changed. We also expect that the enabling environment that will enable for performance will also be aligned with it. And primarily among that will be the petroleum industry governance bill, which is not because at the root of that puts in structure for governance, puts in a lot of things for them. So it is now typically left to government support and also them in terms of the vision that they're going to bring him forth. Yes, he will have to do two things. He will have to run the NNPC as an organization. It has hundreds, in fact, thousands of staffers that he has to deal with. Uh, it has many subsidiaries to deal with. That's mm -hmm. on one hand his job. Then the second one is to lead the industry under the Ministry of Petroleum Resources. So, uh, in terms of the workers and the staffers, the various cadre all the way down, quite a very big structure. I'm sure you know organogram of, of the NNPC. So, you have to deal with the various aspects, those in crude oil production and those who are in refining, marketing, what have you, isn't it? This, strategy, is, this is quite a big job. Strategy, gas and power, mm -hmm. finance, mm -hmm. you name it. I mean, yes. you're probably talking about the structure of any multinational anywhere in the world. So basically, it's, 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 um, it's a complex job, but it's also a simple job. It's a simple job to the extent that once you put all your ducks in a row and you get all the people that are supposed to work with you, 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 have, I mean, you, get, you get the results that you're typically looking for. But more importantly, perhaps more importantly than everything else, is the fact that with the new GMD, you are going to bring in somebody who has... Um, a cocktail of experience across board. He's been within the OPEC organization, so he's yes. familiar with the geopolitics. Uh, I'm of sure, oil. just, uh, uh, just uh, uh, to respectfully cut in, of course, this has still some of the uh, pictures, some of the distinguished guests. Uh, Mele Kiari, the new group managing director, will be uh, inaugurated or formally uh, sworn in within the hour. We're expecting uh, those uh, photo ops to, uh, uh, to be co concluded. Then we'll have, of course, the national anthem and uh, the uh, main ceremony will get underway. Melekiari is taking over today, uh, formally from Ekanti Baru, who retires at the age of 60 as a group managing director of the NNPC. This is one very big event, a smooth transition in the history of this uh, organization, very critical to Nigeria's economy and to the livelihood of the country. Early pictures there, we are on the ground. You hear some of the commentary about what has been said, a couple of interviews will also be done on the ground within uh, the ceremony. So you need to stick with channels television for a full coverage of this and some of the analysis. But let's get back into our studios here at the headquarters in Abuja. Uh, show, show, me, show me, Olabo, the, the, uh, if we look at the, what needs to be done in the industry and you're trying to allude to uh, the fact that within the NNPC itself, there had been some issues whether NNPC or part of it should be privatized, for example, perhaps the refineries, perhaps some of these could be listed, maybe the, the product marketing aside of it. So, Mekanti uh, Baru is out, he's done, he's, he's, on, he's on bit. Now, Melekiar is coming in, you think he has his job cut out for him in terms of the big issues that need to be faced? 
Well, you could say that, but you could also say that somebody who has an in-house experience and who has combined with, with experience of working within the international market will be able to bring in a new vision. You know, whether the refineries are privatized or not comes to the thinking and the strategy of who is the CEO. What is important is that the refineries work. It can be privatized and not work, and it can be maintained and not work. Those are the devil in the details, if you please. What is important is that within the strategic know of how to run an organization, the impediments to effectiveness within the refinery need to be removed, and it needs to work. Up until 1999, when the new regime came in, we spent five to six years experiencing first um, scarcity in Nigeria. Every subsequent military government tried, but it did not work. But within 99, within a year, all of that changed. So somebody came in with some idea, with some strategy, with some energy, and changed all of that. That same thing can happen within the refineries. The refineries used to work. It wasn't like the refineries started one day and we were never working. So, so there were reasons why it worked in the first place, and there are reasons why it's not working now. So it is incumbent so upon all the all we, need is to, all we need is to find out why they weren't working. One of the very core issues, a very naughty issue, has to do with subsidy. It's been as volatile or as inflammable as petrol itself. So, so this is a very critical issue. It looks like Mr. President wants it done. Now we have to get it done one way or the other. That's the thinking of the government, that this subsidy cannot remain. We have to let it go at some point. No, obviously the subsidy cannot remain. I mean, in, even in terms of simple, basic understanding of economics, it, to the extent that if we use, I mean, don't even let us go into the figures because there's a difference between the figures that are official and the figures that you just hear. Whichever case, mm. we're not talking good news. So what is important is that the dynamics within the organization that takes care of subsidy needs to have a genuine self-reflection and come up with... Within the NNPC, you within mean? Within the NNPC. Because subsidy is wholly and totally an organizational thing. It's not external, it's not, it has limited external influences. It's, um, the structure is coming up from them, the execution is coming up from them, and the whole shebang. So this is a time that comes for genuine self-taught within them to be able to look into we need to dis We need to dismantle the subsidy regime. True, you understand, but... It is also, they are also the ones that knows the implication of an outright dismantling in terms of how it affects the economy. And they are also the ones that understand the real technical issues. But what is important is that there needs to be a, a long-term view of the enlightened self-interest of Nigeria. It is that view that actually will, should now motivate them to make a decision on those subsidy key points to the best interest of Nigerians. Mm. The Nigerians, do you think it's time also for Nigerians to think that, look, this is the time to support uh, Mr. President, this is the time to support the government, and by extension the NNPC, that this subsidy has to go as soon as we can get it done? The subsidy has to go. There is no doubt about that. The issue is when. Should it be an immediate thing? Should it be a phased thing? There's never a good time for a man to die. We will have to let the go at some point. Some folks say when oil prices are high, some say it's when it's low, some say somewhere in the middle, we have to let it go. Well, how soon do you think we need to let it go because the country is bleeding? And, but what is important is that Nigerians are also ready for it. Are Nigerians ready? Are you ready for a subsidy removal? You are ready to pay a higher I petrol probably price? Am. I probably am. You that means you're not ready? No. What I mean is this. If I'm to speak for myself, out yes. of one out of 200 million, mm. that doesn't necessarily answer the Nigerian question. So you need to look at it in terms of those who do the planning. In other words, what will enable the majority of Nigerians to be ready in such a way that the economics does not have a turmoil? Mm. Because there's no point in removing the subsidy without an understanding from the bulk of Nigerians. And then there's a turmoil, there's, there are riots and all of that, and the economy itself collapses. I'm not too sure there's going to be any riot if subsidies removed today. Uh, oh, there, there most, likely, be, most likely we've gone past No, no there, there, will, there will be a lot of implications because there will be uh, price rises, there will be some inflationary issues, mm. there, will be, there will be a lot of sudden things. And when all these things start to happen, mm. it's not like you can predict all the things that can happen. So you're going to leave room for some uncertainties. It is all those uncertainties that require planning. 
Because if you have too many uncertainties and suddenly the price of power goes high, suddenly the price of fuel goes high, suddenly your travel cost goes high, suddenly the school fees skyrocket, you know, those are, those are multiple effects. So there has to be some kind of cushioning effect that will enable a balance because they are all interrelated. And where I believe the balance should be, should be in terms of expanding the industry and expanding the capacity of the industry to actually attract more forex. Because that so will attract more investments. So more investment. More investment. More investment is one, but more income is also practical. Because when investment money comes, it comes into targeted issues like um, infrastructure, like building a business. But when more income comes in, that is cash flow, money that is available to spend. I'll give you a typical example if we move a little bit out of the oil industry now. Um, I, had a, I had a relation who quit the banking job and actually started farming. And nobody knew initially what he was doing. But what he does was that they found out that he was sleeping all throughout the day. So I was like, my, my, what's happening to this guy? So I said, I, wish, I should go talk to him. I mean, he's your brother. You shouldn't allow this. So when I spoke with him, I found out that the guy wakes up for him, goes to his farm in Ikorodu, and comes back by nine. And then have some sleep. And then in the evening, he goes out. So what people see is what he does in the evening and in the afternoon. But, not in the, but here's the good part of it. He actually produces some cash crops and some food crops. The food crops he sells every three months, but the cash crops, he has um, a contract with two companies, one in South Africa and one in Switzerland. And he makes about, in terms of profit, about $12,000 a month. So he's making money while some of you are sleeping. Now, this is the good part of it. He's making hard forex, hard forex, forex which really is at the core of what the economy desires. We want people who will not demand forex from the economy, but people who will bring forex into the economy. And those are the things that we are really looking at in terms of the transmogrification of the industry, in terms of the industry in itself being a good source of forex needs to expand into smaller areas, whether it's even janitorial services, whether it is um, um, export of finished petroleum products in such a way that more forex comes in so that there is less pressure on the CBN and less pressure on all the component parts that need. Or even the NMPC itself. Exactly. Because the NMPC, the under-recovery regime that we ran over the last few years, we also have, it runs into hundreds and hundreds of billion. And if this money, if we're not paying it out and we're bringing it in, perhaps it will help us balance what we call the cushioning effect because that money is just going, is somewhere in the air. Yes. So that's why we know initially when I talked about the subsidy thing, I said NMPC needs to do some self-reflection mm. because it is within them, within the organization as a whole, that determines when is best, how to educate Nigerians on when it is best, why we should do it. But what needs to drive them, and which is, I believe is what the vision that the new GMD will bring in, is the enlightened self-interest of Nigeria as a whole. And that is to the fact that Nigeria as an organism, needs to survive. The current system is not going to make it survive. So we need to leave. So it be, the, the motto could be that within the process of self-reflection, there has to be a motto of let Nigeria leave. And that will now determine the process and the strategy for facing out the subsidy. You, you do some work with the National Assembly in terms of oil and gas. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what's, what's the thinking uh, within that community? The National Assembly, as far as the subsidy, refineries, deregulation, the PIB, what was the thinking in there? Well, the National Assembly... It's a very big building, yeah, I'm, hundreds I'm, yeah, and hundreds yeah. of but people But, but apart from that, what you, take, what you have now is yes. a new assembly. Yes. And to understand that, you don't understand the amount of changes that have taken place. About two-thirds of the members of the National Assembly did not come back. So effectively, you're looking at a lot of new regime, new thinking and all that. You also have new leadership. Typically, National Assembly thought is a thought of an individual that represents a certain catchment area. So it is ideally not the thought of the legislator that is speaking, but ideally the thought of the people that voted him in. Whether that's what actually happened is a different kettle of fish. But the thinking there and the sentiments there typically reflect what the sentiments are in different areas, which is why the National Assembly tends to be unique in terms of the product of the thinking that it produces. And having said that, if you're saying what the National Assembly thinks, it will depend on would the leadership of a committee or would the leadership 
of a group is at that point in time. Yeah, mm -hmm. At least the last assembly pushed for the PI, the Pension of Industrial Governance Bill. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and even though it was sent to Mr. President, it was sent back because uh, Mr. President didn't agree with a few uh, uh, issues in there. But so as far as the eighth assembly or the last yes, assembly I mean. was, yes, they were interested in it. So yeah, the what, what, what would you for. like to see under the new assembly? The I, I believe very much that the new assembly will go along in that line as well. Because that is one thing that the whole industry has agreed on, which they hardly do. The whole industry has agreed that there needs to be more transparency, there needs to be, I mean, whether you talk about the IOCs, whether you talk about the locals, whether you talk about typical investors who are coming in, whether you talk about those who have companies, everybody agrees to the PIGB. So that's a, that's a good point to start. So from then on, they bought the legislators, <clears> over, <throat> which was what happened throughout the last four years, which was also one of the first times in its history because it was actually passed. The previous times it was not passed. So it's, that speaks volumes. Yes. And, as, and from there, we believe that the good relationship that has started between the National Assembly and the presidency will count for something. And it will count for the ability to pass the PIGB. So, so the new NNPC uh, Group Managing Director, Mele Kerry, would also be meeting the legislators anytime soon, I'm sure, uh, in the next weeks or, or a couple of months. We, yeah. need to, we need to speak with them about his vision. But also it needs to meet today as far as subsidy and other issues are concerned. I believe so. I believe so. But whichever way, I mean, there are, there are many bases for which engagement takes place. But at some point in time, they're going to be speaking about next year's budget. So at, at them, they, they're going to have to start discussing. Mm. Whichever way, in a, in a couple of days or weeks, they'll be meeting. Uh, thank you. I, uh, we are now going live to the NNPC headquarters in Abuja, the live event of the inauguration of the new group managing director. Amelia Carey is about to start. We will now give you those uh, images as they are starting. This is a channel television live event. They are all seated and there are some of the top officials, the new running. So the event is started right now. We will uh, cut in, into that right now for a live transmission. Please watch. So we are looking at these uh, issues and uh, showing me uh, uh, Olabo Day just about uh, uh, a minute or, or two more to uh, wrap up this conversation about what uh, this is. Uh, this is a big event. This the, the, the image is that everybody wants to see the NNPC move forward. But as we all know, uh, the NNPC is still the, the the underbelly. So talking about meeting with the National Assembly, of course, is nomination and the rest of the CEOs come from the president. So the executive will have their they, they are on the same page. So the only party to be convinced of what they need to do with subsidy or with PIB or whatever is the National Assembly, which is the legislature. Yes. And, and of course, the third leg is the, are the people of Nigeria, you and I. You yes. said you're ready. I think I'm ready. Yeah. And so I that's believe two that, of us out of 200 million. Yes. I'm sure and Paul Elijah is also there's ready, there's but there's I'm going to ask him later if he's ready. I believe there's a thinking public, mm. which is one of the things that is a product of all the confusion that has happened in politically in the last couple of years. Mm. And I believe that that thinking public, once the details of the issues are spelled out to them, can be able to digest it and to be able to run along with it. So that's a plus. The second part is that a lot of talk and convincing has happened across the industry, to the, from the legislators to the people in the industry. So we don't expect a lot of obstacles moving forward. So I think quicker than we think, much quicker than we think, the... The process of passage through the National Assembly will happen. Discussions will happen between the presidency and the National Assembly. The bill will most probably be passed. Then there will be a new, a new, a new dawn for the industry, if you please. Mm. And, and if all this uh, go well, I'm still going back to the issue of subsidy. How soon do you think we need to remove subsidy? Over the weekend, uh, Egypt has to cut subsidy. Uh, <laughs> a portfolio says, look, uh, the folks, ordinary folks have to pay more. So they just cut it by 50%. Maybe we should just cut our own subsidy, have a, uh, they cut it by half, and say, well, maybe we'll cut the first half now, then the other half by December or any time uh, early next year or so. Just do it in phases, maybe to maybe cut it into two or three, uh, maybe not in one fell swoop as we previously uh, wanted to do under the Jonathan's administration. Maybe we should just cut it to three or four, then we just uh, exit it gradually so that people begin to know that, look, you need to pay from 145, the price goes to 170, uh, and then, well, it goes to maybe 190, maybe 200, and then we can begin to find that uh, real level, uh, what you call the market-based level for, for, for petrol prices. 
Well, that's one way to look at it. But I think, and which is my own reason for always talking about an NPC doing it, is that um, a Me Too strategy may not necessarily work. I mean, simply because Egypt did it and some other people did it, does not mean it's the best option. There are peculiarities to our environment. There are peculiarities to the issues that we face and how they are tied to a lot of things. There is a need, a fundamental need, that is incumbent on the leadership that is deciding to look at how these things will affect Nigerians. And it is based on how it affects that a strategy cannot come up. If we don't have the fundamentals, the, the, the basic data on the implications of removal, and we remove simply because of we want to remove, we can have something that is being counterproductive. We need to also realize at the beginning that it is not subsidy removal because we hate subsidy or like subsidy. It is subsidy removal because we want the economy to make progress. So if we remove subsidy and the economy does not make the desired progress owing to certain factors that were not considered, then we are not really making progress. I mean, we are not really making the progress we desire because we need to look at the issues that subsidy in and of itself is not evil in economic terms. Subsidies exist so that the forces of demand and supply does not collapse the free market. And if the forces of demand and supply, I mean, if we leave the, um, if, if government leaves, and I mean, the population, just to forces to of demand and supply, yes. democracy can actually collapse and all that. So, so there's a little bit of intervention. The, the, which is where regulation comes in. Mm. And regulation and part of its subsidy. is part of its subsidy and all that. And you have subsidy in every nation in the world that exists. In one form or the other, you have subsidy in every single nation that exists. So the issue is not that subsidy is evil. The issue with our own subsidy, part of it is the fact that it's opaque. And when things are certain things are opaque, they are susceptible to graft and the inherent vices that come up with those things. So maybe one of the first things that need to happen is greater transparency and significant transparency in, 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 the, in, in the workings of the subsidy. In the workings of the import, subsidy. Import, consumption, exactly. pricing whatever. And probably those data need to be made available daily because the bread prices are made available daily. Mm. So if we are tinkering with prices of subsidy, which is going to be dependent on the prices of crude, maybe those prices need to be made available daily. And then somebody needs to make available the process on how they actually do their own calculations and the considerations. You know, so transparency can go a long way in solving a lot of problems and get Nigerians to understand what is the way forward. And it is when they partake of the way forward, when they mm -hmm. own the process themselves, they can now have it within themselves to carry the burden of pure subsidy. So, so, so that, you think, data transparency is the, the kernel for the buy-in from Nigerians, or, and for all the stakeholders, uh, to Absolutely. be more precise, on how to resolve the subsidy issue. Because I think whichever way, whatever new leadership is at the NNPC, subsidy is at the heart of it. Absolutely. And his twin brother, the refineries. True. <laughs> very, very much. I mean, there are two schools of thought on the refineries. There's the privatization mm, and or stroke, outright sales of it. Mm. And there are those who believe that we can still do it. But <clears throat> when you look at it from common sense, people say that you can still do it. Why, have you not, why are you not doing it? But there's also another line of thought. But if you can do it, let someone else do it. Yes. There's also another line of thought that we have always done. We did it well at some point in time. So what happened and why are we not doing it? Well? Quite, quite a lot. Quite, quite a, quite, quite, so, quite, so the, quite the issue a is on the leadership mm. and the vision they believe they want to. Uh, and the man who is holding that cap of leadership is, is uh, Mele Kiari, the new group managing director. He has quite a lot on his hands from today moving on. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Shoumi. We appreciate your coming here, the managing director at Crabtree Limited.